Carnotaurus is a pretty common dinosaur in a lot of media, from its appearance in Disney's Dinosaur to its appearance as kind of a sub-villain in the most recent Jurassic World film. And in these appearances, it's often given the same skin pattern. Now, it did have the horns, and that is a very interesting feature, but the skin patterns are really unique because we were actually able to get some of the skin preserved, or not necessarily preserved, but we were able to at least get the pattern preserved. Essentially, when this animal got buried and turned into a fossil, a lot of mud actually filled in the cracks in between the scales. And that means the pattern of the scales was preserved in many places along the body. And that lets us know potentially more accurately what it looked like. And so when you see these large rows of scales running down the sides of Carnotaurus in different media appearances, it's because that's what it's long been thought it would have looked like, with some of these larger scales just spread out along the body in rows. But a new paper looked at the scales in more detail and found that's probably not quite the case. And before we get to the exact pattern of the scales, or lack thereof as I will mention later, it's actually really important to mention that these aren't osteoderms. Osteoderms are pieces of bone that actually grow inside the skin. So if you think of things like crocodilians, they have osteoderms, where there's actual pieces of bone inside the skin. And the same thing with some lizards like Gila monsters. This is not the same thing. These are just in large scales. So looking at the reconstruction in Disney's Dinosaur, you can see that the large bony protuberances, that's not correct. And while it could still be potentially more correct in the Jurassic World franchise, it's still not quite correct because they probably weren't linearly arranged like that. Now to be entirely fair, the vibe of being bumpy is still correct. It still would have had larger scales than the others, and these probably would have stuck up at least a little bit more. And so it would still be correct to give it some of these bumps. However, they wouldn't be arranged in perfectly straight lines. Instead, it'd be more randomly oriented larger scales across the body. And this is actually based on a number of different skin impressions that were preserved. And actually also helps to show that the neck probably wouldn't have had as many of these larger scales meaning that essentially there was either a gradual transition into having larger scales, or there was a single boulder transition into having the larger scales further down the body. So now there's at least one large theropod with well-described skin, and it's also the only non-tetanurin theropod dinosaur, and the tetanurins are the groups that include the allosauroids and the slurosaurs, which is everything from the raptors and birds all the way to tyrannosaurs, so a pretty diverse group. So this is one of the earliest diverging theropod dinosaurs that we actually have really good skin impressions from. And this could potentially help us understand how skin evolved in the dinosaurs as a whole. And that's because of some of the features it has in common with some of the sauropods and also with some of the ornithischians, so herbivorous dinosaurs. Now, Carnotaurus, the name literally means meat-eating bull. So it was not an herbivorous dinosaur by any stretch of the imagination. It was definitely a theropod. But the skin commonalities do potentially show us how the earliest dinosaurs may have had their skin set up, with the same kind of patterns of much smaller scales and then slightly larger scales spread throughout the body. And that's because we can see this in other dinosaurs, such as Triceratops, which has been shown to have some larger scales surrounded by smaller scales throughout parts of the body. But Carnotaurus also had some wrinkly skin, and wrinkles in large animals today are found in things like elephants, and the wrinkles really help to hold water onto the skin, and that helps to cool the animal down, essentially providing a thermoregulatory role. And there's potential that this was then lost in the other theropod dinosaurs, as they were closer to birds, so they may have just had a different thermoregulatory system. So essentially, they just may have been able to cool themselves off more effectively than Carnotaurus without needing to wallow in the mud or water to help cool themselves off physically. And it does appear as though some of the other large non-theropod dinosaurs may have also had some of these wrinkles. And so that also does mean that potentially some of the first large body dinosaurs started to develop these wrinkles as a primary heat cooling system. So what all of this means together is that potentially some of the first large dinosaurs may have actually had some of these larger scales that were set up like multiple groups of dinosaurs are, and also may have had some of these wrinkles in order to help cool themselves down. And while it's not necessarily the most effective thing in the world, it does still work as it does still work in modern day elephants. And so it's a really good indication that this may be the ancestral skin of the dinosaurs. Although before we totally commit to that, it's important to remember that Carnotaurus lived near the very end of the Cretaceous, so almost at the reign of the non-avian dinosaurs. And so there still needs to be a lot more research on fossil skin found from long times before this, over 100 million years before this, when the first dinosaurs were still evolving. And so hopefully we can try and find something like that, although it's never a guarantee because this kind of preservation is really, really rare but we were very fortunate to get at least some of it.